All right, let's do it. Do um, it. Well, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Sam Beskind, and I am here alongside Professor Lisa K. Solomon. And we are excited to share our movement, All Vote, No Play, um, which aims to help student athletes become better teammates and citizens. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you guys for being here. It's Friday. It's the afternoon of Friday. And so thank you for giving us your time, your attention, um, your energy, and, and hopefully we'll make, make the most of this hour. I also want to just say thank you to the Andrew Goodman Foundation, as well as Caroline, for all of your tremendous support and for putting on this, this event. It's, it's truly an honor to be speaking, um, and we appreciate all of your hard work. So let's get going. Um, First, um, I just wanted to start with an agenda. Um, we'll first introduce All Vote No Play, what, what we do and who we are, um, then look into our design approach, um, then offer some examples through a case study, dive into what the athlete ecosystem on your campus will look like, how you can spread the word to them and ultimately ignite your campus. So who we are, um, Professor Lisa K. Solomon is here today and our other co-founder, Coach Eric Reveno, um, it was unable to make it, but he is the associate head coach of Oregon State men's basketball. Um, Professor Lisa K. Solomon is a designer in residence at the Stanford B School, the Stanford Design School. She's my inspiration. She's how I got involved in this. And I'm just so lucky to have her as a mentor and a leader. And, and someone who's just as excited about me as civic engagement and um, being good citizens. And I am the all vote, no play lead. My name is Sam. And I only graduated from Stanford where I was the captain of the men's basketball team. And I'm excited for this next journey of my life, um, beginning with this work with all vote, no play. So our mission at All Vote No Play is to build teammates and grow citizens through the power of athletics. Um, we believe that being a good teammate and being a good citizen shares many parallels. And so we're trying to help um, student athletes across the country use the skills they learn on the floor to become good citizens off the floor and, and translate those skills into um, being a good citizen for the rest of their life. So the purpose of this specific presentation and why we're here today is to give you guys examples, resources, and a tactical plan for how to include athletes and coaches into the civic ecosystem on your campus. So as AGF um, captains and champions, how can you include athletes who have been a missing piece of the puzzle for the longest time into the civic ecosystem and boost um, the, the campus morale overall? So a little bit more insight into All Vote No Play. Um, we were born in, in 2020 um, alongside some historic legislation. Um, Coach Eric Reveno was super passionate about getting student athletes and coaches more involved in civic engagement. And so he worked with the Student Athlete Advisory Committee to pass legislation that disallowed any practices or games on election day. Uh, this gave student athletes the space to participate in elections themselves, but also any other forms of civic engagement. Obviously voting is, is the first step, but being a good citizen is just more than voting. And so that's why we created the All Vote No Playbook in, in, in 2021, because unlike 2020 or 2022, there was no major elections in 2021. And so student athletes all of a sudden had this day off. They, the coaches had this day off um, from practices and games, but there wasn't a clear cut way to be a good citizen and exercise your civic muscles on that specific day. And so that's where we stepped in and created the All Vote No Play playbook, which pr provided civic drills, whether you had five minutes, 15 minutes, or two hours, things you could do to engage with your community, learn about history, or gather as a group um, to talk about, you know, how we can be better teammates, be better citizens, and, and utilize our platform as athletes for good. Um, and this upcoming year, um, we want to part participation from every school nationwide. And that is our goal. Lisa, um, please chime in. 
Well, I just wanted to say just a little bit more about the origin story, which I put in the chat, because I think it, the story in and of itself is a story of civic power and civic agency, which is so much of what we're about. And building on Sam's point about the natural parallels between athletics, what you have to do every day that Sam knows has lived, hustle, persevere, look out for your teammate, play as a team. Those are very much the same things that app, that, that we want all citizens to do. And I just want to to share that uh, our, our co-founder here, Eric Reveno, didn't, didn't set out to be a civic uh, pioneer. Um, it was really born out of a response to the murder of George Floyd in 2020, when his team at the time, he was at Georgia Tech in Atlanta, was trying to process how they could shape a better future. The, his, his teammates, his players were protesting and marching, but not really feeling like that they were having the kind of influence that they were looking for. And it was in one of those team meetings where one of the seniors said, Malachi Rice, how many of you are registered to vote? We have this upcoming election in 2020. How many of you are registered to vote? This was June. And zero players raised their hand, zero. And for Rev, who has been coaching for 20 years, this was a moment to say, how can I, as one of the most influential adults in these young people's lives, not how did I never think to say, this is your chance to shape your future beyond your sport? And a few days later, he took to the Twitter sphere as he as he does, as Carolyn knows, he's a very, very active member of the social media community. And he said, on election day, we coaches should not practice or play, but should give time to our players to vote. Hashtag all vote, no play. And this was revolutionary. 1,100 coaches signed that pledge that year. Again, had never thought of themselves answering the call. So I just wanted to share that a little bit of extra commentary because so much of what we're doing is about building something that didn't exist before. And for Rev, having that wherewithal to say, wait a minute, we can do something as coaches to say we're not going to play so we can give these student athletes time off. That was so successful that the players, what, the, what Sam was saying, the student athletic committee turned around and said, wait a minute, why is it just 2020? It should be all years. And so I just wanted to share that because so much of what we're doing is putting a spotlight on these stories of power, influence, and agency. So thanks for letting me chime in, Sam. Yes, keep rolling. Um, and and you, you continue with the floor as, as we can talk about how you as a designer have made um, All Vote No Play special and a unique approach to voting. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Because you may be asking, why is this rookie of the year tennis player from the early 90s so involved in student athletics? Because it is a design opportunity, as I said before, to really create something that didn't exist before. This very clear connection between honoring all of the incredible work that groups like the Andrew Goodman Foundation are doing to train civic leaders on campuses to help bridge make bridges to the athletic community. To be honest, they don't really exist, right? There's a lot of activity that happens in the civic ecosystem that's really empowering and exciting, and certainly a lot of activity that happens within athletics where a lot of eyeballs and influence and frankly, money already is. And the connections between these, even though from a value standpoint are very clear, were not very, very strong. And so the approach that Sam has been recruited for, uh, he, I, you know, and again, full disclosure, Sam was a student of mine and I knew he was on the basketball team. I said, could you just take a look at these materials that we're playing? I mean, that was it, right? It was just, please just take a look and make sure that as an athlete, these really would resonate with you. I don't want anything that's going to make your eyeballs roll in the back of your head, right, Sam? It was sort of like the eyeball roll test. Like you're there to tell me with great honesty, right? And in design, we would say designing for the people that you're intending use your product, right? Use your services. So from the very beginning, the most important thing we did was reach out, recruit Sam. Sam reached out and recruit other athletes to make sure we were not creating something that we wanted, but something rather that would actually work on behalf of this audience. So everything we have done is a designed approach, right? Are we designing the right it? And we are iterating every day. We know that what we're trying to build doesn't exist. Our website of civic drills and some of the resources we're going to show you. And we're experimenting. You know, is this the way to activate it? And so that's why I really want to encourage you in the chat. This is an opportunity for us to learn, uh, to take a look at what we're doing and give us feedback because that's how we're making it better, right? We are building something new. 
So design at its core is a process of discovery. How do you create value for the people you're designing for? And experimentation. How do you learn as fast as possible and iterate over time? And so just to carry that forward, I don't know if any of you have read the magical book called Switch by Dan and Chip Heath. Uh, Chip used to teach at Stanford. But this book came out about 15 years ago is really about a design process to igniting change and basically says that what often shows up as resistance is really just confusion. So your job is to help script the critical moves to, first of all, get the what he calls the um, rider on the elephant, right? The, the get the, the rational and the and the logical and the argumentative uh, components, right? to then motivate the elephant, the feeling, the emotion, and then finally script the critical moves, right? To actually say, this is what we are doing at every step to try to eliminate unnecessary friction. Because one thing I think Sam and I can attest to and certainly Rev is that so many athletes want to be engaged. They don't know how, they've never been asked. They've never been told, hey, look, you can flex your civic power if you do it this way. And what's exciting in sports in general is, of course, you know, it's not new to have athletes take on activism stances and make their platforms and their voice known. But what's so exciting is that it's happening at the collegiate level, thanks to incredible leadership from people like Sam and some of the other engaged athletes that we're working with. Fundamentally, as Sam's been saying, we believe athletics can build great teammates and citizens. Why? Because that is where they're already spending their hours. Those are the practices that they're already practicing. We cannot expect people to be masters of things they haven't had a time to practice. Nobody understands practice. Sam, am I right? Better than athletes. How many 6 a.m. weight room calls have you gone to? How many films have you watched, right? You get better because you practice. We believe, much like the Andrew Goodman Foundation and others in the civic ecosystem like Circle, that voters can be grown, citizens can be grown. And the kinds of things that athletes do every day, working across difference, trying to go for a common goal, exercising pro-social behavior is exactly what we need to amplify within our communities. Absolutely, Lisa. And one other thing, so this is just a screenshot of our website. And as you can see, Lisa's as modest as they come, but her design has really come to life here. And she's worked with amazing teams across the world, literally a design team in Munich to create resources that aren't just educational, but are fun, engaging, and cool to be a part of. We want, you know, you guys at AGF, we want athletes across the country to be proud citizens. This isn't something that we should be ashamed of. This is something that we should be excited about. It's an opportunity, not an obligation. And it's just, it, and so we've really spent a lot of time iterating and, and creating, like, like Lisa said, designing it right so that student athletes and students across the country want to be engaged. Another of the resources that we just developed literally within weeks is something called the Student Captain Voter Guide. And again, this was born out of the realization. And frankly, this summer, we saw a lot of civic activity coming out of the Supreme Court that a lot of uh, athletes and young people didn't feel great about and saying, how can we manifest change? And what you heard, again, at the media level and, and at the national level often was like, vote, 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 vote. But for folks that are new at voting, that doesn't translate into action. So again, how do we script the critical moves in order to help people understand month by month what you can do. There are many, many wonderful resources out there, many of which are presenting at this great summit to help you register, to help you get your ID, to help you access other forms of support. But there was not one resource that existed, particularly in the team setting, that would allow a student athlete to step up and say, these are the things I'm going to do. And we really wanted to make sure we were front loading it, not just in the technical, more transactional elements of voting, but also in the exploration of values, right? That's that part about building teammates as well. When we know more about each other, we care more about each other and to really create a safe place to say, wow, I'm new to this. How do I think about this? So I'll put that in the chat as well, but we're really excited about this and would love your feedback and would love for you to also share it. And we're gonna tell you more about how, how we're hoping to share. 
So just continuing about why coaches and athletes, you know, uh, in the Andrew Goodman Foundation, you guys have insights onto every single campus across the country. Um, and, and we just want to give a little more context for why we're focused on coaches and athletes. And beginning in the top left, you know, team sports make them natural leaders just like you. And so I think that's, that's something that's really important is, is we want to get a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, a lot of leadership to, to support this effort. And, and the thing, the thing about team sports is, is it translates just, you guys are natural leaders as Andrew Goodman foundation champions. And, and so athletes fall into that bucket as well. Second, they have incredible influence on their peers, communities, and their schools. Um, you know, athletes, whether they like it or not, are often in the spotlight. There's nationally televised. There's a lot of money going into athletics. And so using that platform for good is something that I'm really passionate about. Um, there's a lot of athletes out there who are doing endorsements, you know, even at the collegiate level for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so why, not, why use that for something silly like Clorox wipes, or, you know, it, it, let's, let's use it for good. Let's, let's it, participate in democracy. You know, let's use, use that power for good. And so they know how to work as a team in adverse situations. Oftentimes your back is up against the wall and, and you have to make decisions under pressure. And, and that's something that there's a lot of uncertainty in the civic world. And so wrestling with that and fighting through you know, the struggles of getting people registered to vote, getting them actually voting. Those are things that I think student athletes are, are, are capable of doing. And lastly, they're currently, this is the most important one, is I truly believe they're currently left out of the civic ecosystem. And so if we want to have a holistic puzzle, if we want to be united on your own campus and more broadly as a country, we need to encourage everybody to get on board and student athletes shouldn't be left out of that, that picture. I totally agree. In fact, Sam, can I just ask, like, I want everyone to pause. Like, can you think of an athlete in your ecosystem on your campus that, you know, that you might want to reach out to or, or call? I don't, you don't necessarily need to put it in the chat, but like really pausing and saying like, wait a minute, who do I know? Who do I spend time with that? I've never really engaged in this way or asked to consider using their relationships, their power, their time on behalf of, of this effort. Absolutely. And this was a quote from Eric Liu, founder of Citizen University. Um, I'm, I'm not going to read it in, in totality, but it just talks about how power is not inherently a bad thing. It's there. And so let's, let's use it for good rather than putting it to bad uses. Oftentimes there's an affiliation with power that it, it's, it's bad. It's, it's this, you know, mean platform, but there's an opportunity to use it for good. And that's what we're trying to do. Now, Lisa, I, I want to pass this to you to, to talk about a little bit more and give a little more context of what we did at Stanford last year and, and how um, our AGF friends here can, um, you know, use this as a prototype for their own events or um, networking on their campus. Amazing. I hope you don't mind. Carolyn said it's training. So we're just, we're giving you lots of resources. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm real time uh, chat texting you all. Um, and just to build on what Sam was just saying around uh, the power and, and using power, um, uh, it's, it's, it's one, we look for small wins. We look for, you know, people keep saying to us, what are your goal? What are your goal? And it's easy to be like, we want 3000 athletes. You know what? We're trying to change the narrative. We're trying to build relationships. Yes. We're trying to change individual athletes mind. And oh my gosh, Sam is like the living model of, of just what's possible when you really turn on that talent in extraordinary ways. Um, but Citizen University, if you don't know Eric Liu's work, is just extraordinary at really talking about what is citizening, like what does that actually mean? And he talks about it as citizening as the, um, uh, they talk about it as an as equation of, of power plus character. And, you know, and he, and, and Eric Liu's book, uh, You're More Powerful Than You Think is just, I think everyone should read it because it really helps all of us understand that power comes from more, first of all, as Sam said, that it's neutral, it could be used for good and bad, and it's not just money. 
right? It's not just military, that we have power in our ideas. We have power in the ability to gather. We have power in the ability to mobilize. And that is something that I, I think all young people should understand, that you don't frankly have to be leading an activist march to have power, that you can use your influence in so many ways. And so uh, it was extraordinary for us that because of our work at All Though No Play, Citizen University, inspired by it, actually wrote a specific article about how student athletes can map their power. And we're starting to see that already. So for example, in 2020, when we saw NBA arenas and even some sports arenas um, use their power to say, look, we have this enormous facility in the middle of a pandemic, we should use that for safe voting. And there was just some research that came out that talked about just how powerful that was as a strategy. Notice that didn't exist in 2018 or 2016, right? We're inventing it because we are thinking about how might we make different choices in order to create value. And um, uh, one of the uh, case studies that Sam said, it's just a great story. We're small enough groups who are being a little transparent, even though we're being recorded, Carolyn. So we'll, we'll discuss the bleeps. But, but we want to have an honest conversation about what was hard and what was easy. Um, you know, in 2020, there was a lot of momentum. Everyone was excited. Oh, yeah, we got to vote. We got to take time off. We gotta... 2021, now it's legislation. There was just not, not that there was less excitement. No, I think there was definitely less momentum. There was just more confusion. Like, wait, I'm not voting. What else could I do? And so that's why, again, we created that playbook, as Sam said, to help create really the easy button. Oh, you don't know what to do? Great. Here are, here are uh, four, three different categories. You, you can learn by, by um, watching the women's soccer team um, uh, lobby for equal pay in the documentary or, or watch... Um, or listen to a podcast from John Meacham, a sports uh, a historian, in conversation with Doc Rivers about the greatest sports uh, speeches ever that promote activism. So we just kind of curated all of these, as we said, civic drills to basically say, look, your compliance officer is going to be sending you an email in red that says you better not take that, you better not play that day. What else should you do? We were like, here you go. This is what you should do. Um, and at Stanford, I was lucky enough to have Sam right there, and we were also working with uh, the NCAA champion water polo coach. The three of us were this mini design team, and we said, what could we do at Stanford? And literally, about two weeks before election day last year, I, working at the D school, said, wait a minute, I have this huge space at the D school. Why don't we just host a civic gathering for athletes? In my head, I thought, look, we're just returning from the pandemic. Athletes still don't really know each other because we had taken the whole year off. What if we just create a hugely celebratory event where we brought athletes across every team, we made it really fun, we helped uh, instill civic pride, and we showcased some alumni and what it means to be a good citizen by learning, engaging, and gathering. Um, and we, uh, it, thanks to Sam's unbelievable hustle, you want to know hustle? Hustle is getting 200 athletes in less than 10 days to show up to an event at a place on campus that they probably never even heard of. Um, and we just organize it to be super fun, high energy. We got tailgating from the sports cafe. We DM the mascot, the tree, to come and, and spend some time with us. And then that picture um, of the panel, this was sort of the marquee moment where John Tanner, the coach of the water polo team, was interviewing Sam and five of his peers um, about the kind of, of ways that they were flexing their civic power. So like, again, maybe not necessarily known to all athletes, but Kyla Bryant, for example, uh, a Pac-12 uh, national champion gymnast talking about why she started Black Cardinal. Um, Sam talking about, you know, his work involved in this effort. Uh, we had a fencer talking about how she was exploring using blockchain to create safe voting. All of a sudden, we're learning about all these cool things that are happening through a language and through relationships that really matter. We also had videos from Cory Booker, so a Stanford football player that obviously now is in the Senate and, and just has tremendous things to say about the connection between athletics and public service and how democracy is not a spectator sport. Um, and we had another local alumni, uh, Olatunde Shabomahim, who played on the Stanford team, who said he, I think he's the only player ever to have never scored a single point 
on the varsity men's basketball team, talking about how he started um, his work in East Palo Alto to really lift the community. So all we were doing again was just trying to make these ideas more accessible. And then one of my favorite ones, again, hat tip to Sam, came from an exercise. We had these cards uh, out on the table um, called We're Citizening By. So again, saying citizen, break down this mental model that citizening is just for the people that lead climate activist marches. No, you're citizening when you pause and you ask someone about how things are going, when you thank the team trainer for showing up for you. Um, and we really just wanted to expand this notion of how we could all come together to care for our community. Sam, what I miss? Oh, oh, we also had Stanford boats involved. That was another. That was another key part, right? Like again, that ecosystem bridging. So they came. They brought T-shirts. They brought stickers. They were registering people. So a lot of it was sort of outreach, and then planning for a, a really high energy way for people to feel engaged. Not to mention that bottom right uh, picture is one of the most massive games of Rochambeau tournaments you've ever seen. You've ever seen. So I think like a wrestler won new claim to fame of a Stanford Rochambeau tournament, but, you know, really, really just trying to make it fun and engaging. Yeah, Lisa, I think you nailed it. Um, it was just, a, it was an awesome experience and it was, um, it was just really spoke to our ability to, to hustle and, and get, get people, people want to do this stuff, but they just don't know what to do. It wasn't really too too hard of an ask for me because I, I was like, there's going to be food, there's going to be excitement, there's going to be energy, music, photos, and and people realize that voting and being a good citizen can be fun. And so that's really, um, we're like Lisa said, we're just trying to change the narrative and, and create a lot of excitement around this. And so, um, you know, maybe you could do something like this on your own campus. I, it, if you need any um, support or any ideas, feel free to reach out to me. Our, the rest of our presentation will talk about how you can include the athletic ecosystem into creating something like this. And so um, we'll dive in there, but I just wanna pause for a moment. This is kind of a natural break in the presentation. If there's any questions, feel free to fire them away. Otherwise, Lisa and I will keep on rolling, but I'll pause for a moment, even if you just wanna catch your breath. I know this is a long presentation, so uh, yeah, I'll, st I'll stop here. Is this the halftime? The halftime? Yeah, the halftime. Yeah, the halftime. Don't make me do another, don't make me do another huddle, Lisa. All right, all right. No, we're going to get some music going in a minute. So Sydney asked, with Sydney, thank you for the bridge to the next part of the conversation. Do you have suggestions for students who do not have athletic connections on how to reach out to athlete coaches to try and engage them in civic engagement? Yes, we do. Thank you, Sydney. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll we were dive in. The court in. Right now, we would like throw a t shirt your way. <laughs> I just want to note, you know, Sam and I are wearing our swag here. Um, uh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. There's lots of different ways. And I think, you know, again, we're going to go through them. One of them is in the institutional way that Sam's going to go through. But the other, um, I think, that I think is equally important is, um, you know, just to uh, get to know people. Um, that are athletes, right? Like the peer to peer is also huge. Sam made unbelievable, uh, Sam, this is in the presentation. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep bragging about you. Um, early on in this effort to try to keep up the momentum, Sam reached out to a number of his peers in different sports and asked them to do videos about why all vote no play matter to them. So he got the quarterback, he got the star of the women's basketball team, he got an Olympic swimmer, and we put together this video about all vote, no play and why it matters and what it mattered to them. And I'm not, I, I think that that swayed the department to really get behind it. That video and seeing the power of the student voices was the tipping point that got them to then write the article that I just posted in the chat. So, so there's lots of ways that you can reach out, even if you don't necessarily have those natural connections or you're not on a team. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Lisa, and thank you again for your question, Sydney. Um, hopefully, you'll walk away with some answers. Um, so this is kind of how we think about the athletic ecosystem. At the top, you have your athletic administration. That's the, the, that's the athletic director and all the people around them. Below that, you have the support staff. These are the people who really make tangible things happen. Um, and we'll get into kind of the nuts and bolts of, of what sort of stuff could be useful, whether it's putting up graphics during, you know, the halftime of, of a game or 
or getting resources to create gear or swag around your event on democracy day t-shirts or something like that or getting you know a restaurant on uh, on campus to to support with food or whatnot um, below that we have coaches and these are the people who obviously are closest to the student athletes and so we'll dive in um, beginning with athletic administration and so there's many different com components of athletic administration. I am not an administrator, but I'll do my best to describe them. So at the top, you have the athletic director and obviously getting a big yes from the athletic director, like we're all on board to support your program is, is phenomenal. But that's obviously, um, it might not be feasible in many situations. And so that's why we suggest starting small and, and stacking small wins is what is is what we call it and so there's a lot of other people in the department whose literal job is to support student athletes in so, in these sorts of initiatives so that on each campus there's someone called a life skills administrator and that's the student athlete advisory committee liaison and so those people connect with the civic leaders on campus already and, and that's a great person to reach out to if you want some institutional support in, de in developing your event or sharing resources or whatever it may be as an AGF fellow. There's also a mental wellness programming coordinator on most campuses. And I think this is the, a, a natural connection is between being an engaged citizen means having a community and connecting with your community and there's a very natural tie to that between, between mental wellness and being a part of a community. And that's something that um, we want to share as well is this isn't an isolated siloed thing from mental wellness or any of the other initiatives that athletic departments and schools across the country really care about. They're all very interconnected. And, and so making that connection is natural and, and you shouldn't be afraid to do so. And lastly, on, on each campus, there is what we call FARS, faculty athletic representatives. And that's a professor on campus whose job is to connect the, the educational side of the, the, the school to the athletic side of the school. And, and so looking up who that person is on your campus and, and making that connection is another way to gain institutional support. Sam, can I just say a couple of color commentary on your, I mean, uh, a lot of these folks, particularly the faculty athletic representative and the and the and the um, mental wellness, and even a, another sort of subcomponent of the administrator, which is the compliance officer, who particularly for Division One schools because of this legislation is mandated to provide support for this. It is a gift if you reach out to them. It's not like can I reach out to them? It is like they will. You will be their best friend if you reach out to them. I have free resources that are nonpartisan, ready to go, that will help make your team stronger and support mental wellness, which by the way, is a huge priority right now across all campuses and especially among athletes, they will thank you. So even if it's a cold email and Sam and I write about four cold emails every day, if not every hour, they will be grateful to say, wow, I didn't know that this existed. This is great. So um, it may feel a little overwhelming that I didn't know certainly what a faculty athletic representative was before I started working on this or the fact that there were so many different kinds of support within athletics, but wow, will they be excited to get your phone call. Awesome. Now looking at the support staff, um, I, this is a, a part of the ecosystem that is often overlooked, but honestly might be one of the most important things. And this is something that Coach Rev has ranted and raved about, is that, is that these are the people who really have the ability to get things done. So at, you're not always going to have top-down approval. And so sometimes you just have to build from the bottom up. And so, so look for video and social media productions. A lot of times these people are student interns who are running accounts for, student, for these teams. And so reach, you know, don't be afraid to DM the, the sports te team account of, of your school, you know, whether it's men's basketball or women's soccer or whatever sport it may be. The, a lot of times those people are looking for good stories to share, especially in the off season of their sport. This is such good publicity. And, and so do, you know, collaborating with them is a, 
opportunity. As Lisa said, it's, it, it's something that they'll be excited about as well. Look for equipment staff to see if they have extra gear. Can, you know, ask people, can you help with graphics? Do you have surplus swag? Can you take pictures of our event? And so whatever you're organizing, whether it's a voter registration drive or just a civic event in the community or, you know, whether it's community service or, you know, cleaning up campus or whatever it may be, support staff can help make your event come to life. So utilize their skills. Don't be afraid to make the ask. That's my probably my number one takeaway from this experience is just don't be afraid to ask. The worst thing anyone can say is no. Now looking at coaches. Um, now coaches is a, is a tricky thing and I wish Coach Rev was here to, to, to share about how coaches can get on board because they have so much on their plate already. They're trying to win games. They're trying to, you know, be leaders for their team. They're trying to help all, you know, their players develop as young men or young women. And it, but there are people out there who have opinion leaders. And so look to social media, media to see who has been active um, when it comes to civic engagement. You know, there, there will be, um, there are coaches on your campus. And, and so, don't, you know, don't beat your head up against the wall trying to find a coach who isn't necessarily already engaged, you know, find the civic power energy givers out there and, and start with those people and then they'll be able to use their network as well to branch out. Lisa, do you have any commentary here? I mean, I, I think you're, you know, lots to say about that, Sam. I think you're, you're as you said, your willingness to reach out, even though, you know, you may not you may not, you know, know them or may feel a little uncomfortable, but, you know, uh, and particularly this point of year or two where a lot of, of sports are starting their seasons. And, you know, again, I just can't, I can't emphasize enough that you're giving them something um, like a little gift to be excited about, right? It's not, it may feel like a burden, um, but because of how we've packaged a lot of the resources, they're really designed to, to be amplifiers, um, and, and so, you know, really, um, you know, understanding, and, and I guess the other thing I'll say about this, Sam, and, and you could speak to this from your own personal experience, there's not a single coach. There are many coaches, right? There's the head coach that's often like really focused on the big picture and the playing. And then there's assistant coaches or associate head coaches, even volunteer coaches. And sometimes those are the ones that have energy to do these kinds of things because they just don't have you know, they're, they're not interfacing with just as many, you know, like real time uh, priorities every day. So, um, so even the ecosystem of coaches. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is that a lot of these coaches, um, they know each other, right? They know each other across, you know, different uh, schools, but even within their school. So again, harking back to John Tanner, who was our champion within Stanford, he would be at these meetings and say, look, we really got to do this. Like this is, we got to get behind this. And it was really like his credibility and his relationships that, that helped, uh, you know, I was sort of like helping him by developing the materials. He was then helping us by sharing it and giving that credibility with the coaches. Awesome. Yeah. I think that's spot on Lisa. Like you said, there's, you know, within these teams, there's oftentimes video coordinators and player development staff. These are the sort of people who are looking for an edge to help their team win. And this is an opportunity to build community within a team. And that's ultimately, you know, when the, your back is against the wall within athletics, like these are the sorts of experiences, experiences, having uncomfortable conversations. Those are the things that play dividends in the long run. So this is a great asset for them. Lastly, student athletes, um, you know, there is so many ways to approach student athletes. You know, on Stanford's campus, student athletes make up one eighth of the population. And so leaving them out of the civic ecosystem is just a huge mistake. Um, but the, 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 way, the strategy that I have gone with is, is approaching team captains, senior leaders, and a group to start with is that student athlete advisory committee. They're looking for ways to engage student athletes civically and you know they have a lot of priorities but these these are student athletes who have already opted into whether it's social justice issues or you know external affairs or mental 
mental wellness. These are people who are passionate and want to have an impact on and off the floor. So start with those people as well. Most schools have a SAC Instagram or Twitter, and you can easily find this, those student athletes on those social platforms. And so getting support from team leaders, getting SAC members on board, they'll help share these resources. And you know, if there's, if there's athletes who you know have influence on campus, um, be sure to reach out to those people. They might not be a team leader or a team captain, but just people who are social, want to share this stuff and get the word out is, is um, you know, the strategy that we went with. And so, um, like I said, the goal is to make student athletes just see this as an opportunity, not an obligation. Keep it fun, keep your communication lively, help them want to become better teammates and citizens. So a little bit more on spreading the word. There's obviously many ways to do this, um, social media being the most obvious, um, but the, I don't even necessarily know if that's the, the you know, the best way to do it. Um, uh, within your campus, you use ways to have campus-wide publicity, share, ask support staff to share graphics on the video boards during games, post flyers around the facilities, see if you can create team apparel to have teams all wear a shirt supporting a cause. Um, these are all ways to get, spread the word and, and make civic engagement fun. And the most important is highlighting involved athletes. So once you get one or two student athletes on board, Lisa likes to say nothing is louder than the sound of your own name. And so there's a real opportunity here to, to have athletes use their own platforms to share the work you're doing. And I think that's something that we, we've experienced a lot. It's honestly something that I've experienced a lot is, is I've, I've gotten to do a really cool things and be a part of um, you know, tremendous of speaking events, do things like th this today, just because I'm involved um, as, as a civic leader. And, and it's, it's a really unique experience and a way to leverage power for good. And I just want to build on that, Sam. I know we're running short on time here. Um, we're gonna we're we're ending in our final slides, but in the chat, I put our new campaign called the Engaged Athlete. Again, hat tip to Sam for the idea. So if you know someone, just send them to us. We're gonna make them look awesome, and then we'll make you look awesome. So so this is this is the win win win. So you know now you've got no reason not to reach out. To <laughs> awesome, Lisa. Yeah. So in these in these weaning moments. Um, I wanna just say, take action. So find those civic power energy givers. Look for the people who are already actively engaging, who can make tangible things happen and start with them. And then just stack these small wins. You don't need campus-wide approval to get started. You already have you know, legitimacy as an AGF champion or fellow. And you know, just, just start, start doing that, take action. And then lastly, do what you do as an AGF fellow. You know the ins and outs of voting and civic engagement better than me, better than Lisa, better than anybody. So share your knowledge and, and, and do it pr with pride. Um, after this presentation, we'll share more resources to ignite your campus. It sounds like Lisa has been sharing in the chat already, but Go to allvotenoplay.org to find the playbook. We'll show the, share the voter captain guide as well as an activation guide. Um, we're hosting an event in September. Um, and if you want more resources with that, I will follow up uh, or more details on that. I will follow up with the invite. It's going to be September 13th um, at 5 p.m. PST. I'll uh, connect with Caroline to get contact information to share the invite there and just like I said, engage with your athletic department. Start with that athletic administration, the support staff, coaches, and student athletes. And, um, and before you know it, you'll be building something amazing. Um, again, here is allvotenoplay.org. Um, please give us feedback. Oh, that's Lisa. We're, we're, con we're constantly iterating. We're trying to make it better. And so if you guys have thoughts, suggestions, um, reach out to us and, and we'll implement them as well. Um, lastly, we're happy, you know, it looks like we got three minutes, um, just enough time for one or, one or two questions, but thank you guys so much for being 
um, being here today. It, it's truly an honor and we'd love to have, um, you know, we're a small, small team, but we're making it happen. And if, if you know people who want to support our effort or join in, or if you guys want to help out in any way, we'd love to have you on board. So thank you.